Pam Buda presents Fun with Quilts. <laughs> I couldn't resist. <laughs> Hi, I'm Pam Buddha of Hardspun Quilts. Welcome to Mondays with Marcus. I am very blessed to have been designing historic reproduction fabrics for Marcus for about nine years now, and I enjoy designing traditional style quilts. This is my Star Maker Mini Runner. This is the project that I designed for Mondays with Marcus. I am partial to mini runners because I think that they have many more uses in decorating than a traditional runner would give. And I would like to show you ways that I decorate with them in my home, which will come up in just a little bit. The pattern is a free downloadable pattern on my website, heartspunquilts.com. Go to the products tab and you'll see digital downloads and there you will find a couple of free patterns. And I have kits available as well. This one is in blue and white and red and this one is in black and white and red. Both are from my fabric lines. This one is more of the New Circa Essentials and this one is more of Bess's Flower Garden. I would love to talk about hints and tricks with the cooled construction, and I will do that in just a moment. Large runners can often overwhelm a space, but small runners, I feel, add to the space by giving color, texture, and that quilty feel, making small spaces cozy with the items around them. But first I'd like to show you my new project, which is Forevermore, my 2021 block of the month. Shops are taking signups right now and the program begins in January. I'm sorry that the quilt is not well lit. Um, and it appears that the colors are much darker than what they really are. But there's beautiful reds and blues, deep golds, browns, beautiful, cozy, light neutral prints, and black. The quilt features a beautiful starburst medallion center, surrounded by a row of small quilt blocks, and then surrounded by another row of large quilt blocks. It's a true sampler. Lion Geese border, finish the outer edge to make one beautiful, stunning quilt, if I do say so humbly myself. We're going to begin our Star Maker Mini Runner tutorial by making the Ohio Star block in the center. And that is made with quarter square triangles. So there are two methods that I really like to use to make quarter square triangles. The piecing methods are different, but the result is the same in that it's made larger and trimmed down, which I always like to do. And there's lots of stuff in my um, Heartspun Quilts Hints book all about making things larger and trimming them down so that they come out perfect every time. Now the first method is not the one that's in the pattern but I thought I would show it to you anyway because it gives you the most options where all four triangles can be a different fabric if you wish. But to make this triangle, the quarter square triangles for our project, you would need to take your squares, which are cut larger, and cross cut them twice. The important part of cross cutting anything twice, which includes setting and corner triangles for a big quilt, is to cut them precisely. 
to go from point to point with your rotary cutter and not let the ruler move, which is often a problem when they're really big. Now, I really love the Creative Grid rulers in that they have this um, gritty stuff on the back that helps things to not move. The newer models come out with a half of an inch grit and a quarter of an inch grit on all of the other sides, but this one side has half of an inch of grit. And this is my one favorite, three and a half by 12 and a half because I can just use it for everything. Um, but I like to lay it down from point to point and then that half inch grid is right there and when I press really hard it does not allow that fabric to move. If you happen to not go from point to point and you get a, a nick, which I did purposefully here, and you see that little notch that's a, more of a square in the corner and um, not a perfect point. That is a misaligned triangle and they really are not gonna work the way you want them to. When you sew your quarter square triangle together, that's the reason why they don't often meet where their, their points are accurate. Um, so pitch those and put those aside for another day, another project and start over. But had we cut them perfectly, you would lay them out like this and sew them together. So you're gonna put the two sides together like so. And here's how I begin mine. So I love also using these fine patchwork pins made by Clover. This is what the package looks like. They are made for patchwork. Often we don't pay attention to what the pins we're using are manufactured for. And these are manufactured for patchwork so they don't distort the patchwork when you're sewing over them. Now, you always want to start in the square corner and you would sew your seam this way. But you know how that little triangle often wants to separate. I mean, these pins can get really, um, you could get them in the corner really well, but you can't ever get them to pin a point. So this product is one that I absolutely love. It's called the Seam Align Glue from Acorn. And it has this syringe top and you can pull the fabric back of this corner and put this tiny little dot. It just goes, you know, anywhere you want it to be and it stays put. Just that little dot of glue, press the points together and it's glued together. So now when you sew along the line, the two points of the triangles will not come apart. This works in lots of different scenarios where you're trying to sew those points together. And I love this stuff. You can iron over it and it washes out. And if you had to rip the seam out, you can tug on it and it will come apart without distorting the fabric. So that seam line glue is just wonderful stuff right along with our perfect patchwork pins. So then we would make our quarter square triangle in the two halves and then sew them together so that they would end up with this result. The second version of quarter square triangle that is in the pattern that I also like um, is a method where you can work without sewing and working with any bias seams, which is, you know, kind of nice. The only downside of this version is that you make um, two quarter square triangles of exactly the same fabric. So it isn't as scrappy as version number one, but it's still kind of fun. So the very first thing you wanna do is take your squares, which are still larger than they need to be, and I drew a diagonal line with a pencil from point to point. Then I put two my my uh, light and dark fabrics together and I sewed a quarter of an inch on both sides of that drawn line. That will give us two half square triangles, which are right here. From this point, we're going to take one of them and turn it over 
and draw a line from point to point perpendicular to the seam. Once that line is drawn, you're going to take your two half square triangles and nest them, put them together, mirror image. So you want the dark on one side on top, but the dark is on the other side on the bottom. And you want to nest that those seams so that they butt against each other and match the corners so that they look like this. Then you can pin them like I did here. And so this just keeps the two seams together but away from the intersection. And then once again, you're going to sew a quarter of an inch on both sides of that drawn line. When you cut them apart, you will have two quarter square triangles without having to deal with bias edges. And the result is the same. So now to trim our quarter square triangle down to the size we need, I am once again going to a creative grid ruler. Um, I like the way it's marked and it's very easy for me to see. We're going to trim this to two and three eighths measure. And um, for this particular unit, I just go to my square. And especially because a lot of the other trim down rulers for quarter square triangles don't have eighth inch measurements. So we're just going to go back to our basic square ruler. And what I look to do is find the two and three eighths measurement and have it sit on the seam lines. So we are looking at the cross line here on the diagonal. We want the two and three eighth mark to sit on top of that seam and the two and three eighth mark to sit on top of the seam here as well. Once you know that it's in perfect alignment, that is, you, you can take your first trims here and here. These are your points for the next turn. So we're going to rotate our unit. We're going to put it down on the two and three eighth mark, which I like this little notch here in the corner. And we're going to look to make sure that that diagonal line is sitting on the seam once again, and that our two and three eighth is on that seam, and the two and three eighth is on that seam. Once all of them are in harmony, we can trim and we have a perfect quarter square triangle. I'll take that little off, but you get the idea. Now that we've made all of our quarter square triangles, we can assemble our center block. And it is just a very simple assembly of plain squares, quarter square, plain square. We have our coordinate print in the center. You would sew into rows, pressing to the plain squares. That will give you opposing seams. And then sew your rows together and press once again. Completed one an Ohio square block and um, you're well on your way to finishing your Star Maker Mini Runner. The rulers, the pins, and the seam line glue are all available on the website as are both kits for the um, Star Maker Runner as well as the free download. But we'll also get to that again one more time at the end. Up next, our, our end blocks. <clears throat> so the next part of our tutorial is that we're going to make the sawtooth corner block, which is this unit right here. It's made up of six half square triangles, one three and a half inch square, and one one and a half inch square. Just like the quarter square triangles, I always make my half square triangles larger than they need to be and trim them down to perfection. 
Now, I have a whole section in my hints book called Make It Larger, Trim It Down. It also has charts where I have done all the math in eighth inch increments so that you can just follow the grid on the, on the table for A squared triangles, find what your pattern says to use, and then cut it at the larger um, measurement that I give in the book. And it tells you what to trim it down all to also. So I've done all that math for you and I've made it easy breezy. So back to trimming this half square triangle, which in addition to having to, to make the squares larger and trim them down, um, we're also, I partnered that with my block lock ruler. Now the way that the half square triangles are made is the way that we did it in the previous segment, which for the quarter square triangles, and that was simply to draw a diagonal line so a quarter of an inch on either side of that drawn line, cut them apart, press to the dark. Pressing to the dark is the standard, and although sometimes in patterns, designers ask you to press to the light, but most of the time it's pressed to the dark. When it is, the ditch is right here. This ruler, the block lock ruler, has a channel in it where you it accommodates the seam allowance. You can see that it's missing. It's a little bit of a, a um, indentation. If you place the block lock logo on top of the light print and lay that channel on the seam, it locks into place. The ruler never rocks back and forth because it fits nice and snug there. And you should be able to move it up and down the diagonal seam until Whatever measurement that you want to cut your high score triangle to is centered in the middle of the unit. You always want to trim all four sides. Never assume that two sides are already good. You'd be surprised at how often they are off. In this case, we're going to trim to one and a half. So we have the one and a half inch line here and the one and a half inch line here. This ruler does eighth inch increments, which is wonderful. It makes it useful for everything you need. And we want to center that one and a half inch square so that there is something to trim on all four sides. You simply then press on the ruler and make the first cuts. Now, the really cool thing about this ruler is that you don't have to pick it up and position everything twice. You simply place your fingers on both sides of that channel and you rotate very lightly clockwise and the ruler catches the unit in the ditch and turns it for you and then you bring it down to one and a half inches right here and make your second trim do this for all of the half square triangles and they are perfect every time. My hints book contains 60 plus pages of quilting hints from fabric preparation through quilt labels, including both of these charts, which help you make it larger and know exactly what to trim it down. The next step in completing our sawtooth corner blocks is to sew three of the half square triangles together like this um, for the top of the unit and three like this. Notice that they are not positioned exactly the same. So refer to the graphic in your pattern. Once they're sewn, then you add one one and a half inch coordinate square to this size. And this is a three and a half inch of your main print. So you would sew this unit to this, and then this unit to this, and you will have your sawtooth corner block. Now, the next step in your sawtooth corner block is to add the corner setting triangles. So you would be doing this. This is a three and a half inch square cut once diagonally. Now the trick about adding a triangle to a square is that they, the triangles have to be positioned 
perfectly in the center. And the easiest way to do this is to take your square, whatever patchwork is your square, it could be a block of anything, and press, finger press it, fold it in half once and finger press it. And then do the same thing to the triangle. Finger press it so that you find the center of both things and match the presses, the finger presses, which is pretty easy to do. And then you go back to your wonderful patch of pins and you print all the way across. You will have your quarter on both sides when they are perfectly matched in the center. Then you would be sewing this and adding this one to the other side, which then gives you the place to add your Ohio Star. Kind of squishing everything here, but you get the idea. Do that to uh, both sides of the runner. Now that your Star Maker Mini Runner is all sewn together, you will quilt as desired, of course, and then bind it. Now, if you have not ever experienced an angled binding, I thought that I would review that for you so that you can uh, take care of that yourself. And I made this little mock-up piece to show you how it's done. And it's actually very easy. It's all the same principles that you would normally use in that you would mark the quarter inch seam from the, in the corner. So I don't know if you can see this. I'll try to get up there nice and close. But you see the white mark that I've made there. I simply took my ruler and laid it on the straight edge of the next angle. And I use this product called the Clover White Marking Pen. It is a, wa a water soluble and ironable marking pen. I use it for all my wool projects when you're trying to mark something on dark fabric and it works really well on anything that's dark. So it just takes, the only thing is it takes just a few seconds for it to appear. So we will place a quarter of an inch on the next edge. Mark that quarter of an inch right here. And we're going to sew along and stop right at the corner, just like we always do. Then you can remove your pins and you want to fold the fabric back, the binding back, and have it be along the edge. You always want it to be along the edge where you want to go. So it's making the same miter, but it's going to be at a different angle. And then you want to fold it back, just like always, aligning it with that next edge. And the fold should always point right to the point of the angle where you're, you're going. And then you start to, to pin here. I usually pin, pin, and then you're going to do this neck, the very same marking for the next edge. So we're going to bring the two, the binding all even with that edge there. We're going to lay the ruler on a quarter. We're going to take our white clover marking pen, run it here. And then I'm going to pin this space. That tells me where to stop sewing, and so does the white mark. And I can sew then from here to here and repeat the same angle steps. It's just that easy. While visiting my website, please sign up for my newsletter to get future sew alongs, other free patterns, giveaways, and all that is new from Heartspun Quilts.
Be sure to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and my blog, and comment on all for a chance to win one of 10 fabric prizes. Be sure to like, follow, and share on Mondays with Marcus Facebook page. They're giving away great fabric prizes each week as well. And join us next Monday when Nancy Rink is Marcus Fabrics' next featured designer. Thank you so much for watching.